What's up, everybody? How are you doing today? I hope you had a great week so far. It is uh, the another another DTM versus show for you right here on Behance. If you're joining us on YouTube, do know that you can leave us a like and subscribe on YouTube for Behance Live and find us on Behance, behance.net forward slash Adobe Live. I am DTM, there it is, Delta Tango Mike, that is me. You can find me anywhere on the internet, Delta Tango Mike, that's my Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and website. And that is one of my uh, pieces of uh, advice for artists is to always, always find out one word that one nickname that you can spread across all platforms so that it's easy to find you. Okay, what are we here to do? We're here to do our battle. That's what we're here to do. Are you ready to rumble? Yes, we are. Okay, so <laughs> before I bring in our next contender, a.k.a. victim. <laughs> no, no. We ha I'm going to uh, share a little backstory, all right? So what happened? What happened? Oh, well, today we have Robotic Pastries as my contender for in a Photoshop art battle. Oh, my God, Photoshop. I'm more of an illustrator and not to be fresco, but Photoshop. Well, here's what happened. I challenged Robotic Pastries to give me three themes that she's willing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with me and draw live here on Behance. And so she sent me a 1930s rubber hose character, a detective character, and an RPG character. And it was up to you out there on the internet to vote on which character sketch we were going to do battles on. And so last week I went live and I drew the 1930s rubber hose character, which is myself drawing. I drew a detective character, which I will talk more about uh, this character that I've created, and my RPG character. So I posted those up for voting on the internet, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. So that is up to you to tell us which one of those three characters is most interesting to you that you want to see live here. Come on, camera. Hold up. Hold up. And so if you want to download and have fun with those sketches, check the link in the description of this video. Download those sketches and have fun. When you click through that link, it'll take you to a folder that already has all the sketches of all the contenders that I have faced so far. Odari, the Mad Penciler, and Robotic Pastries. Click on the Robotic Pastries folder and you have access to all of those six sketches. So have fun. Before we bring in our guest, a.k.a. Contender, I will give a shout out to everyone who's watching this right now. It's a batter, sis clever. That's right. <laughs> welcome. Welcome. Annika in the house. Thank you, Annika, for being an awesome, awesome host. Uh, big ups to Annika because she's the one putting together the, the voting poll so that you guys can vote on your favorite art piece before this show ends today there's the link to download the sketches and what's up to gareth in the house yes please follow our host and guest for today the links to robotic pastries link tree is in the description in the chat so go ahead and grab that grab that annika says dtm rep in la you know sometimes sometimes i need to uh <laughs> get my drip on misty says battle time Umar Korn, welcome, welcome, welcome. Rob in the house. Thank you all for being here. And on YouTube, of course, we got uh, Ro, um, Rob, Rob Prod Games. Thank you for stopping through. And uh, Shel Chalice and Vicky Mays. Thank you. Vicky Mays says, let's rumble. Enough talking. Let's go. <laughs> Let me bring in our guest. Hey, guest, how are you doing today? Tell us your name and where you're from. Hey, I'm doing good. Uh, my name is Lauren. Uh, I'm from Georgia. All right. Lauren from Georgia. And uh, you go by the nickname of Robotic Pastries. What can you tell us about that? All right. So, yeah, I go by uh, I go by so many names. But Robotic Pastries <laughs> is a uh, business name and the main name I have online. Uh, came up with that some years ago when I realized I could just combine the name of two things that I like to make a business name. <laughs> That's one with that. <laughs> All right, robots and pastries. I like those two things too. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> cool name. Okay, so tell us about why you chose those three themes to for the art battle challenge. All right. Well, uh, it's three things that really define like 
uh, a lot of things that I like, like uh, the 1930s theme. I'm really big on cartoons, especially older cartoons. I love the style, I love the look, mm -hmm. and it shaped a lot of my art style, uh, even how it is today. Mm -hmm. uh, just, I love mystery. Like I really love mystery. Uh, I've been into mystery for Mm-hmm. Okay. I love love games and especially love RPG games. Mm -hmm. uh, I love how RPG characters look. Uh, I think it's really fun, like the adventure style and everything. So it has a lot to do with uh, just enjoying that game genre. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, one part that everybody missed is that uh, during the last audio, sorry about that, everybody, we did uh, uh, handle that. Uh, thank you for letting us know. Is that we will talk more about the detective and why as soon as we get started to draw. So everybody out there, are we ready to get started? Are we ready to see some artwork? Say yes. Say yes. Yes. Yes, Robotic Patience. Yes, for me. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes yes i'm ready let's go so there it is boom let me go into the art progress page there we go there it is and so um we have i have my uh photoshop on a surface studio what are you drawing on photo uh, with photoshop on robotic pastries uh, i'm using a huion canvas a huion i think it's mm -hmm. what's it the 22 22 pro mm, fancy fancy nice <laughs> i like that i like that thank you everybody for sharing uh in the chat and glad to see you there thank you so much um uh let's see uh garrett i saw garrett i saw rob i see wade in the house welcome welcome okay so let's go ahead and get ready to rumble here um i have my sketch you have your sketch um and uh did you use any references for your sketch is this a character you came up with tell us about this detective who is this detective okay so uh this little detective i actually came up with him what was it is it last year i believe last year mm -hmm. um his name is paulston paulston paddle uh he's a, a little dog little beagle uh that solves crimes mm -hmm. and uh, he was inspired uh, mainly by a game that I got into last year as well. Uh, Professor Layton, uh, really big on that game. It's a mystery game um, where you go around solving puzzles uh, and solving like the overall mystery of the whole story. Uh, I really love the series, really love the character. So I also like was like inspired to create a, a character of my own that kind of fit that same kind of vibe that I really like from the game. Okay. Nice. Nice. Uh, as I, uh, Uma Korn says, uh, is asking Paulston Pedal. Paulston Pedal. That's, that's the name? Oh, it's Paulston Paddle, like Paul Pad. Okay. Paulston. There it is. Paulston Paddle. Nice. Nice. Okay. We'll go ahead and get started. Tell us a bit about your process as you get going. I know that with me, I have my sketch on one layer i can turn off that layer off and on i mean we're in photoshop i start a new layer and i can clean up my sketch a little bit tell us about what your process is when you start up a sketch start a drawing from a sketch okay as you draw just... don't, don't don't let me don't let me oh. uh, get you talking and then not drawing <laughs> okay <laughs> Cause, cause then i'll win i'll win <laughs> All right, so I guess I can go into the, the basics. Uh, I know after I, let me move it so I can adjust the opacity, but after I start on the sketch, um, really just pretty straightforward, get the sketch out, and then the next step would be to get on the inking. Uh, the inking can sometimes either be one of the faster or more slow parts for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, in this case, it was a just a little bit more slow, but for the most part, I I'll just keep it simple. I use for the most part, I always use um, some pretty basic brushes unless I want to experiment. 
Mm-hmm. But um, like what basic brushes? I I went looking for the classic Cal T Webster brushes, and I'm on the Kyle Ultimate Two B pencil, and that's one of those difficult things to me wanting to draw with Photoshop is that man, so many brushes, so many options. What are your brush your go to brushes? Yeah, my basic, I, I really just mean like the default brushes that are already on the program. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with Photoshop, uh -huh. I hadn't looked around too much uh, for more custom brushes as of yet. So I just thought I'd just go ahead and use the, the basic ones. I, I, I really like the smooth feel of the default brush most of the time. So that's usually what I end up going with. Okay. The, def the real default, like I don't even dig around. Or nothing. Right. <laughs> Hello, loves data joining us on YouTube. Welcome to the chat. And of course, Rob Prod Games is still here. Appreciate you. Download the sketches, please. Check the link in the chat so you can download the sketches and do your own drawing based on these sketches. Thank you, Uma Corn, for uh, dropping in the Paulston Patty. Uh, um, this. Uh, Spelling on the chat, yes, and she and Uma Korn says cute droopy ears. Yes, <laughs> they're very cute. <laughs> I I like the basic uh, brushes myself, um, but I'm always looking for like a brush that has that the pressure and the the thickness that that helps me uh, visually be happy with my sketch. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. you know you uh. I don't know. It's this thing about digital that you sometimes feel like, well, if it doesn't come out the way I expect it as when I'm drawing traditionally with the actual pencil, then I don't feel like it's there, you know? Oh. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, I know for, for sketching and for inking, I like to use different brushes. Like for sketching, I like to use a brush that feels loose, feels soft. Mm-hmm. And it makes it way more satisfying to sketch instead of feeling really stiff. Yeah. So that's why I use for, for this sketch. Like, I like a, a pencil, soft pencil type brush to use for that. And inking, it really just depends on, on what I want to do for the, the picture. Like, I'll either just want a smooth, cartoony look and use, uh, like, a default brush like this. Mm -hmm. Um if I want to go something like maybe a little sharper, a more specific look, I might use a thin brush or a textured brush. It all depends on the subject I'm drawing and what it is I'm wanting it to look like. Okay. And so so right now you're inking. Are you inking or you're just uh, sketching still? What's it uh, like? Right now I'm inking. Inking. Okay. And you're using a basic ink brush? Right, I'm using the just hard round pressure size, it's called. Okay, hard round pressure size. I need to know these things because I, I want to get better, and I, I love your work. Anybody who's uh, watching this right now needs to click through the links to follow Lauren Mays, a.k.a. Robotic Pastries, and uh, check out her work. Oh, my gosh. Can you give a quick example of a, a sketch, though? So I know, like, uh, yeah, they're pretty basic, really. Like, sketch, sketch phase is really straightforward most of the time. It's like, but this one, it was really simple. Um, mm -hmm. Like, he, he's a simple character, so I didn't really have to spend extra time trying to refine him. Like, sometimes for a sketch, I'll, I'll do a basic underlying sketch and then go back and refine it with another more detailed sketch. Mm -hmm. uh, but for him, since he's already such a, a simple character, yeah. you don't really, like as long as you know the shapes, it's not really necessary to try to go and put in more detail. You can really just fill out everything. Right, right, right. You know, I should have done that. I should have kept my, my sketch simple and done it more of a cartoon style. And uh, I got caught up trying to uh, make my uh, detective look like who he's supposed to be. So <laughs> mm, I need to remember those things. Remember those things. That's a good, a good answer. <laughs> Welcome to the chat. Francisco, a.k.a. Paco. Welcome. And Serif, how you doing? Welcome to the stream. 
And uh, yeah, can uh, leave us some comments, questions, and suggestions in the chat so that we know you are there. Uh, and let us know if you have downloaded the sketches. Download the sketches so that you too can draw as cool as robotic pastries. Let me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you about my uh, character. His name is Columbo, and uh, he is a character played by um, Peter Falk in the TV series Columbo. He is a detective, and what's really cool about him is that he has this like laid back, relaxed, a little bit lost type of attitude <laughs> when he's solving crimes. And uh, and what's really cool about him is that he sometimes um, he will lock in early in the show. He will lock in on the person who did the crime. Like, he already knows. But, you know, he likes to play games. He likes to talk and visit and um, and chase around the person and make them feel like they have to help with the investigation sometimes. And, uh, and bam, next thing you know, uh, at the end of the show, he either pre- Columbo will present the evidence or uh, give the, ch- the, the criminal a chance to tell on themselves. And so there he is. That's the end of the show. It's really funny and quirky, and he's a cool guy. Another great detective that I am very big fan of is Batman. Batman is a detective. That's where DC comes from. The, le- the, the name of the DC company is DC Detective Comics. Because back way back when, back a long time ago, uh, there was a Detective Comics comic book, and um, the main character is... Batman, and so I saw. I thought to myself, "What if Columbo was the, the uh, and was a mashup? What could we do with a mashup between Columbo and Batman?" And boom, Columbat, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Columbat is what we have. <laughs> Paco says both of these characters are looking great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, mm-hmm. We have. Um, Hi, Columbo, says Vicky Mays. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate you. And then uh, Stephanie Mays is tuning in on YouTube. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you. And uh, uh, Rob Prod Gangs is, is asking a question. Your sketchbook process, is it always blue? I love your sketches and the strength your drawings bring. They are beautiful. Oh, thank you, thank you. Ah, see, that somebody likes my sketches. Why <laughs> did you... <laughs> Before I answer the question, I'm going to ask Robotic Pastries, why did you draw... Your sketches in red because that's because of her sketches were in red. That's how I ended up drawing my sketches in red too. Oh, I I use just use pink and stuff because I like the color. <laughs> <laughs> you like the color. You like the color pink. Okay, okay, okay. I can dig it. Um, uh, I draw in blue because a long time ago when I was starting out, I um I realized that uh hey Nisha how you doing? I realized that. Comic book artists, and which I something that I always wanted to do, is uh, they draw their comics in blue as part of the creative workflow, so that eventually, once you draw in blue, and um, the sketch, you can then draw over it with ink and whatever else, and then the creative process of comic books, you end up going through a copier or a scanner, and the blue would not show because. It's not mm-hmm. just regular blue, but it's a non-photo blue. And uh, and so I understood that. I was like, oh, well, I want to be a comic book artist. And so I want to do the process just like they do. And uh, and that's how I ended up with um, drawing my uh, my artwork with a lot of blue pencils. I started incorporating blue pencils. Plus, there's uh, one of my art mentors. His name is W. And uh, he uses uh, color pencils in his sketchbook. I met him over 20 years ago. And once I saw his sketchbook, I was like, whoa. Like, when you're looking at sketches and, um, and they have this um, it, it, it's in, in amazing art, and then they use these different colors to bring their sketches in on a sketchbook, and i never seen that before, ever. I was like, oh, I, I got to draw like that. This is what I'm going to do. So now from now on, and then, you know, the first thing in my mind was like, where did you get these special uh, color pencil sketches ske- for sketching and they're just regular color pencils so <laughs> <laughs> that's how that happened i can't find my brush my ink brush oh my gosh let me see let me oh yeah it is inking that's not the one i want rough inking 
Let me see. Okay, that's cool. That it's work. a I, I could add on like on top of um really liking you know, just the color pink, but I generally do like to keep sketches colorful because I'll I'll use different colors for like different parts of a sketch if I need to add on to something and I mm-hmm. want to like say I'll sketch out uh, sketch out the base of one color and go over another color. Maybe there's a separate part of the sketch I want to draw on a different layer so I don't mess up the other part. So I'll like change the color, mm-hmm. sketch out the arm, legs, or clothes on top, stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I like that. That way, because uh, you sketch, you, when you're sketching, it's a whole bunch of lines and shapes everywhere. And so you want to keep track. And uh, do you use different layers when you're sketching also? I, I do, I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I If I don't just end up cleaning up the sketch entirely just on one thing, I'll usually um, sketch out either the background on a different layer or uh, the refined sketch on a different layer. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, I end up using a lot of layers. Yeah. Yeah, and and, uh, there's an artist I follow. His name is, um, and I talk about him all the time in my streams, uh, Mexifunk, a.k.a. Orlando Aracena, and he says, uh, layers are free. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so use them. Oof. I'm on the wrong layer. Come on, here we go. Uh, let's see. Thank you, Rob Prod Games. Congrats on your arts. God bless. Uh, amen. Appreciate you. And to Robotic Pastries. Beautiful traces. I love it so much. Uh, I, I use illustration, illustration more. Illustrator or illustration? Yes. And uh, Harley joining us on YouTube says, Yo! Yes. <laughs> All right. All right. So let's see here. And now tell us about your detective. Uh, is that um, a character you draw much? Is that uh, one of your fan arts um, characters that you go to? So for this guy right here, uh, I don't draw him much right now. I draw him a couple of times back when I came up with him because I want to use him to make something. Uh, you do a story. Mm-hmm. Uh, later on in the future, um, I would like to make a kind of mystery game with him in the vein of um, that Professor Layton who I, I really like. So uh, I came up with the designs for him and a couple more designs as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's a, just a cute little dog. I like this whole, <laughs> whole uh, story surrounding him. Uh-huh. <laughs> I can't even get into it yet, but Basically, I wanted to have a character that gave off the same vibe of, like, the Layton series, uh, make something of my own. Mm-hmm. It's a, a funny, funny, fun little dog. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, check out our Robotic Patriots um, uh, website because, a link tree, so you can get to the website because she loves to write and draw her own stories featuring characters that you already like and love, like Sonic the Hedgehog and Pac-Man. <laughs> I did a Layton comic too, just recently. Okay. So that was, that one took a good minute. And, uh, and so the, when you write the stories, the, does the story come to you and you, and, and you decide to go ahead and uh, write it and draw it or, do you um, sit down and say, I want to come up with a particular story that's like this and like that, and then you find the character you want to work with? Actually, it varies. Uh, it varies a lot because it'll either be like a thing that I'm into at the moment, and then I just think like, for me, the best way to show appreciation and love for something I like is to make a story about it. Mm-hmm. So. If I really like really like something, I'll try to sit down and think like oh, I would love to do a story with this. So I'll think of uh, a concept, or maybe like a concept will just come. But I'll, I'll think on a concept, and like if I want to go with it, like all right, mm-hmm. I'm doing it. I'll take some time to sit down, write out a summary, and write out a script, and I'll just figure out what angle I, I want to go with it, and mm-hmm. just dive right in. Dive right in. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Dive right in. Um, that's cool. Yeah, sometimes I guess uh, creativity will spur from sprout from different angles. Sometimes uh, layers are free. Says Annika. That's right. I love Mexi Funk and his vector stuff is amazing. That guy, 
that guy's talent. Oh my gosh. I you know when I first came across Mexi Funk when he his artwork was in the splash screen of Illustrator when you opened Illustrator. Oh, oh my gosh! Don't get me started. Oh yes, that that dude, that dude. Oh, I'm chasing him. I'm chasing his greatness. I don't want to take his place. I just want to be right next to it. Um, uh, but yes, uh, that dude, that dude is awesome. Uh, back to. Uh, characters and writing. Did you go to art school or um, take any art classes or writing classes to where now you're writing your own scripts? Uh, I did not. I didn't go to a art school. I, I didn't really take any writing classes either. Um, I say the writing mostly came from reading a lot of books. I, like I love to read books. I love stories mm -hmm. and just like observing really just how how stories are written how stories come together mm -hmm. so i just use that and sto stories just constantly come to me they're like it's like an assault they're constantly coming <laughs> so i think <laughs> so i'm always thinking up of a story like if there's something i like i'm into i'll try mm -hmm. to think of a, a short story to tell about it mm -hmm. but uh no I, I didn't have any specific training or teaching about it uh like i learned the basics in school, but um, mostly it just comes from a whole lot of observation and uh, stuff that you read online, tips and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that that uh, that's awesome because uh, that's been my method for writing a script, a uh, comic book script that uh, that I'm working on right now. But I'm, I'm working on the actual comic book, but uh, but there's so many resources online. It's like I'm just gonna dig around. And uh, and find like how are things supposed to look like? How are you supposed to write it? And then when you find out, there's no one set way, you know. And uh, and so yeah, like, all right, that works for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I'll do it that way. So right now you're doing the inking. Uh, when it's time for colors, do you like to separate your colors in different layers? Do you do like flats, um, layers? And uh, what process do you use for coloring? Like, uh, like right now, I'm trying to do that process where you do a selection and then you fill it in. Um, what is what is your way? So when it comes with colors, um, I usually just do straight up flats and then go go right to shading. It depends. It all depends on the complexity of the picture. Like. Uh, I'll do the characters in the background on a separate layer. Mm -hmm. So like, oh, okay, but for the character, I usually just do that all on one, unless uh, there's like a specific part I'm wanting to shade differently. Mm -hmm. But I'll do all those colors on like one layer. Yeah. Yeah, I'm learning. Mm -hmm. I'm learning on that process right now. I'm learning on how I can focus on uh, on uh, on using uh, the that flats uh, process. Because, like I said, I'm I'm deep into Illustrator, and so I break up everything into layers, and uh, I go I go in Illustrator and uh, create my shapes and so on. But when it comes to pixel drawing. There's so many different ways that um, artists draw, but flats is something that I'm trying to get used to so that I can take advantage of um, the selection, the, the paint bucket, little things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't like the flatting. Is, uh, that part's pretty simple for me, unless it's like a big uh, color palette. Mm -hmm. or a specific type of vibe i'm trying to get a picture it might take time to pick a color mm -hmm. but otherwise that's a one of the most simpler parts for me is when shading comes in that's when things can take a bit longer it all depends on how simple or complex trying to keep the picture okay boom here we go oh this uh so right now that's what i'm doing oh look at that oh that's awesome whoa I'm telling you, Robotic Pastries has skills. <laughs> Let's see. Paint bucket. Got it. 
So there's something going on. Let me see. That's the initial sketch, old sketch. This is the out the sketch outline. Oh, that's the that was the inking. This is the shadows. Okay, cool, cool, cool. That's on down below. So I am missing. That's what happened. All right, there we go. Oh, it's the same color. That's what it is. So we don't want that same color. It needs to be purple. I'm getting and getting lost. There we go. Boom. There it is. There we go. Now we're talking. I was like, what happened to his eyeballs? All right. Now let's gonna go ahead and select again. And this time, don't don't do it like that. Control D. Do you use uh, shortcuts or do you have one of those fancy um, um, four or five button um, little doohickeys? Uh, I just use the shortcuts if they're ingrained to me at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's easy to just reach over for the keyboard. Annika says skills. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Harley is uh, sharing on YouTube. So it's very interesting. I tend to do flats on one layer or multiple layers, depending on how complex the character is. Also, that's right. Yes. Yes. That's what I'm finding out. There's not one way of doing things. Boom. Let me go ahead and deselect. There goes my Batman. I got different. Uh, I like doing the, the, the blue and purple the grays on Batman. That's the colors of the Batman that I like. Bam. There's many different Batmans too. I had to when I was drawing this this uh, Batman. I had to think about well, do I want a uh, like the long ear Batman or the short ear Batman? Because you got the Batman that has the long ears. Then you have Batman with the short tiny ears. They, they're kind of, uh, some of them are angled like this. Some of them go like that. It's it's a whole lot of different Batmans. It's too hard to keep track. Oh, then you there's, got the, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I'll just say there's too many versions of one, one character. Mm -hmm, That's yeah. how superheroes go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's so many. Um, Ghost Toast says, it's just if it's just a doodle, I'll do flats on pretty much one layer. And you know, I I have a problem with um, the flats understanding how do I end up uh, um, uh, well I guess I, I haven't really tried it let me go ahead and do get my uh, my magic wand because then there it is that, that's I guess that's what it is that's what I um, have a hard time understanding that I can always come back and do a selection on the color layer that has the flats and just select that I guess that's that's why we do flats, right? So you can always come back to that flat layer mm -hmm. and select a particular color. Uh, I know um, I tend to do when I'm like going right in the shading, uh, I'll just uh, I'll either like magic wand a certain part or just go straight into it and clean up and whatever other part it gets into. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think um, that's why sometimes separating like the colors for the flats can be helpful if you're not wanting to get all that mixed up. Yeah. And and, and that's the thing is, is getting used to a process because I'm used to just drawing. Just lay another layer, draw some more, another layer, draw some more. I don't like masking. <laughs> I do not like masking at all. I don't like that whole process of masking. So uh, maybe that's something that I need to get used to and maybe also have it as a, uh, as a part of my process because I see artists uh, doing the masking and, uh, and it's, it, you're able to not have to think about the edges of where you're coloring. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's why I use, I use masks for that when it comes to like, uh, really when it comes to shading, that's where I always uh, end up using some sort of mask. Mm -hmm. And um, for like coloring, if you need to change the color of a flat, that's when you can just do that, like the lock transparency and mm -hmm. adjust something. Nice, nice. And if you want more tips, like what Robotic Patience is sharing right now, Robotic Patience has a regular stream. I think it's on Twitch. Uh, it's either sometimes on YouTube or. Uh, Picardo. I'm trying to use YouTube more. Oh, okay. YouTube and Picard. Nice. 
Nice. What do you like about Picard? Um, I guess mainly that I've just been using it for so long. Uh, it's just a purely art-based streaming mm -hmm. platform, but uh, it's it's pretty it's pretty simple. Okay. But uh, streaming streaming on YouTube as well is nice because it also opens up. It's uh, more people have a YouTube and are more aware of YouTube, so it's more likely to have more people just be able to jump in and stab and create a, a separate account, you know? Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that I like. Uh, if, if it's low, low stress to just jump in and uh, watch something. Yes. And there it is. Boom. Got my Batman, a.k.a. Columbo, in the house. Let's see. We got a few more minutes. A few more minutes. Oh, my gosh. Time is going by fast. Okay, okay, okay. All right, let's see. Let me uh throw some highlights in here. In a few more minutes, we're going to uh, have a chance for you to vote on your favorite drawing. Will it be uh, Paul Paulston Paddle or will it be Columbo Bat? <laughs> <laughs> Get ready to vote by clicking the link that Annika is going to share. As soon as we're ready to show off the finished product. I guess I could uh, also share the sketch I did do. I initially designed Boston a little while back. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. There he is right there. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, so you did that so that you can see the... Um, 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 Oh, there it is. So you can see the um, the the reference. You have a reference, uh huh. Right. Uh huh. Nice, nice. Look at that. That's so cool. He's so cute. He does have big old <laughs> droopy ears. That uh, those beagles for you. Mm hmm. Yes. Yes. Annika says we have about twenty minutes left in the stream. So if you have any questions. Please feel free to ask them here. This is your time. This is your time. All right. Okay. So, as you can see, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry about that. As you can see, I have a series of layers for my drawing, starting with the the sketch. There's the sketch. Then I went in with uh, outline. Where did it happen to my outline? There it goes. I did a quick um, inking outline. I added a bit of shading. The shading layer, I did change my mode to blend mode to multiply, turn down the opacity to 32. And look, if it's 100%, it's just a, it's the same color as the outline. But because I turned down the opacity, then I'm able to use that shading layer the sh that layer as a shade then I went in and uh, added a flats layer for my colors then finally a highlight layer and what I like to do at this point is grab my eraser and get a, a cool fuzzy eraser there it goes large size low harness and just kind of edge edge out some of this and then turn down the opacity a little bit so I can edge out a little bit of the, take the edge off of some of the shading and, uh, and highlights. That's a bit of my process there. And uh, let's take a look at what you got going on there, Robotic Pastries. All right. Um, you probably can't see my layers right here, but I have the, the layer for the sketch. Mm -hmm. And then I have up here the inks right here. I have that. Uh, I use the elliptical tool for the magnifying glass for that. Mm -hmm. And I made an extra layer to add the little, uh, let's see, add it highlights on his eye right there. And, and then basic black color layer, uh, layer for shading, and then layer for our highlights. Boom. All of which keep pretty simple. Mm hmm mm-hmm and I, I i like the that inking uh brush you're using because it has that fuzziness about it and it, it feels a little on the traditional um organic 
organic mm. look to it. Nice, nice. All right, so I'm going to reveal my drawing while uh, Robotic Pastry is going to show off, change over to the other, um, to the finished product. So there it is. There is my mm -hmm. Columbat. Columbo. Let me turn off Columbo. Let me grab my color. Boom. Uh, can I move it? Can I move it where I want it? I think I can. I don't know if it worked or not, but there it is. There it is, Columbo. If you know anything about Columbo, is that he is a detective in L.A., California. So there's lots of palm trees. So I had to have some palm trees, and uh, and there he goes on Columbat. Bam! All right, let's take a look at Robotic Pastries piece. Oh, oh my <laughs> gosh! It looks like the bad guy is behind the wall on the corner. And it's peeping over his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready for the voting. Uh, Annika is going to share the link shortly in the chat. And, uh, and so do, to, uh, do get ready for the voting. That's awesome. Look at that. And so you flattened everything into one layer to save. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, this is just a PNG, but uh, okay. I can't open the PSD because no, there's a lot more. Uh huh. There's a lot more going on oh. if you want to know. No, it's okay. So you got a layer for the background. You added the, the clouds. It's nighttime, so we have a lamp. Boom. And the link to vote is in the chat. It's in the chat, so everybody can go ahead and click on it and vote. Look at that. So let's go ahead and uh, leave that up for a second. And uh, let me see. Uh, there it goes. That's good. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And, uh, and there it is. There's the artwork. There's the final artwork. Now you can see. Uh, and go ahead and um, boom, vote. Uh-oh. My browser's not working. But there it is. I am Cullen Bat on the left-hand side. That is my drawing. On the right-hand side, we have Robotic Pastries with, what's his name again? Paulston Paddle. Paulston Paddle. And uh, he's checking on clues. What's the clue? What's the clue at the moment? What is it that he has uh, um, to follow up on right now? Giant mysterious paw prints. Let's find unknown paw prints. <laughs> <laughs> unknown paw print. A real paw. And uh, I got to get to uh, my link to 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 um to vote. Yes, clever. Just one more thing, vote. That's right. That is uh, how um, uh, <laughs> Columbo does. Columbo, it's about uh, finding the criminal, getting in their face, and then when you think that the criminal has um, um, gotten away with it, uh, he, Columbo always comes back and says, well, one more thing before I go. Boom. Oh, I know what happened here. I can't. Uh, my wife already voted, so it won't let me vote. It said already somebody in my household has voted. Can you believe that? <laughs> so uh, let's see. Um, anything else you'd like to tell us about your drawing, uh, robotic pastries, and why you prefer that art style? Um. So I know with the drawing, uh, some extra things I usually add. It's usually uh, the post finishing up the flats and sketch and everything that's where all the real as you say fun comes in because uh, I use a textured brush for the lighting mm -hmm. um, get like a grainy look uh, I colored parts of the line art for like where the lighting is to make it pop a little bit more give a nice look mm -hmm. um, for the style uh, I really like the simple cartoony style, and I thought uh, having like these bold lines against like a kind of flat, almost storybook like background would really like help it pop and give it a nice, a nice kind of feeling. Yeah, and I, the the colors really bring it in. You know, it does um, help make it look like it's the evening, nighttime, and that yellow light. Um, it 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 puts up uh, the the character front and center of the the image and so a nice contrast there that's awesome that's awesome really good work 
me, I'm getting better at that. I'm getting better at um, doing the the uh, contrast, you know, so that mm. so that the so that you can see the action, you can see what's happening. Please vote, everybody. Ma's music says, "Great job. The finished pieces look awesome." Thank you, thank you, thank you. Close call says Annika. Oh, what is the what is the vote? Let me see. Let me see results. Let me take a look. If I can get past the ads here, there it is. Oh, it's getting close. Ten votes for robotic pastries. Nine votes for DTM. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! <laughs> we still got another few more minutes to go. Um, thank you, everybody who's voting for the artwork. Of course, I I think I like um, Columbo Bat, um, but I, I I you know Paul I, a Paul seen paddle is uh is really cool what time period is this character living in um i guess this it's a modern setting he just dresses like a like an old time detective <laughs> for some reason <laughs> he he dresses like uh like he's uh sherlock holmes or something right <laughs> uh-huh uh-huh the, the votes are still 10 to 9 Garrett says, both awesome, hard to choose. Uh, you know what you need to choose, Garrett. No, I'm just playing. Uh, <laughs> Missy says, these are awesome. Thank you so much. Um, and where else can we find your work? And tell us about um, some of your ongoing uh, long projects. Robotic so you can, mm-hmm. you can find me um, on my website, roboticpastries.com. And you can find me on Twitter as well, at Robotic Pastries. Uh, Instagram, same, Robotic Pastries. Um, Tumblr, Artist Block Alley, Evening Art Dog, twenty two three twenty two, so many names. Mm-hmm. But um, and some of my ongoing projects right now, I have a new web series going on called A Trek with Nanik. First episode is up on my YouTube, which is also Robotic Pastries. But uh, you can check that out. Um, I'm always making like new short comics as well mm-hmm. uh, that I put out every now and then. But um. My web series is the most recent thing that's going on right now. Working on episode two, but uh, you can check that out and keep up with it. Right, go ahead and check it out. the The old series, I mean, I say old, but it's the previous project was uh, Boxing Bugs. That was that was uh, amazing. Uh, tell us a little bit about a little bit about it and where did that idea come from. So boxing books, that's that's one I definitely want to return to and start getting new issues out again. Mm-hmm. Uh, for boxing books, that was inspired by Cuphead way back. It was before, was it before or during when the game came out? Mm-hmm. But I was inspired by Cuphead. Um, I, I saw the like the trailer way back at E3 before it came out, got delayed, finally came out. And the style, that's what really, really pushed me into getting into the the rubber hose 1930s style. So, like, it started as a concept of, you know, wanting to do a game with uh, these cartoon-style bugs, but then grew into a different idea, like uh, bugs, these smaller bugs going up against bigger ones in a fight. And so I ended up building on that. Uh, I started it at first as just, like, a, a short comic idea. Mm-hmm. But when I did that, uh, it, the idea got so much bigger, so I scrapped the previous comic, started over, uh-huh. and made the first issue, which somehow I updated the every week within like a year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> somehow? <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, I really do love that that mm-hmm. project, and uh, I want to come back and finish it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Nice. Nice. The votes are, uh, I think, I'm ahead now. Sorry. Robotic pastries. Uh-huh. <laughs> this is the time to go ahead and get your votes in. I was able to vote once. Did you vote uh, robotic pastries? I believe it got my vote. Okay, all right, just checking. Um, and the way the this um the website poll website works is that once a vote is counted from a particular I think uh IP address, uh anyone mm-hmm. else in that same household is gonna have to move away from that Wi-Fi and use their own data on their device. So go mm-hmm. ahead uh, and do check out the guest for today. The link tree is in the chat. Robotic pastries. There we go. And this poll is still going. Annika is still sharing the link. Let me double check and see what's happening. Okay, 14 to 10. Uh, this is uh, pretty cool. I do like your work. I will say this about 
robotic pastries. And uh, I said this to her many times, so ain't no secret. I love that cartoon style and how you're able to make things like what they're supposed to be. The dog looks like a dog. The bugs look like bugs. Um, and then uh, the poses. It's like, you know, you're able to work with the anatomy of your character to draw the pose of what it's supposed to be. What is it supposed to look like? And, uh, and so that's why I asked, like, did you go to school? Did you take any classes? Um, and, and I can tell that a lot of it is through uh, natural talent. But, of course, because you produce so much work by now, it's, it's kind of almost like a part of how you draw that it looks so mm. good. It's really nice. It's beautiful. I appreciate it. And I'm a really big fan of your work. Oh, well, I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, everyone. We're uh, down to the last few minutes. I will give it a couple more minutes before we declare the winner for today. I worked on my Columbat character. Let me see if I can share here. There it is. We, st we still got the Photoshop open. We worked in Adobe Photoshop. My creative process and any application is uh, very basic. I think a lot of different artists use the same process where there's a series of sketches. There's a series of uh, ink layers. Uh, and depending on the program that you use, uh, the layers are free. So you don't, have to, you don't have to worry about how many layers you're using. Turn them off and on. Mm -hmm. Never delete the layers. I don't delete layers. I, uh, I sometimes when I go in and I make adjustments, I'll duplicate the layers. So that way I still have the original sketch or drawing of the layer and how I, what I did one time and then try something new on, um, on the same drawing, but I duplicate that layer so that I can still go back if I need to eventually get into some colors and finally some highlights and uh, shading. And, uh, and I wanted to do a lot of cool highlights on my mask. I think I was there. I was kind of there uh, with it. I forgot to shade some of the mouth, oh, the, the chin. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, I did keep also my sketch. Let me go ahead and see if the sketch is there right here. This is, uh, that's the palm trees. And I think I left the sketch right there. There's the sketch. So without the sketch, and I kind of and left the sketch so it can give it a little texture. That's a, another hard mm -hmm. thing textures how do we go about adding in textures and um do you have uh, a secret for how do you bring in textures into your drawings robotic pictures um i go about it like uh some different ways like uh i know a lot of it's like probably trying to use different brushes or just different methods like for this right here i don't know if you can see it but there's like a grainy mm -hmm. kind of grainy texture here yeah uh, for this, I use the, what was it, brush? It was the, it makes I think it's it like a default grainy brush here. Uh -huh. Makes that sweater stand out like it's got texture on it. Right. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, like I use that. Um, it's like it's figuring out how to combine it in different elements. Like I use the grainy texture brush for the highlights and for a darker, darker bit of shading mm -hmm. right here. Mm-hmm. And I used it on all the background, even the the character right here. Yep, yep. I'm gonna and and uh, and this is it. This is the 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 the, the votes are in fifteen to thirteen. Thank you so much, Robotic Pastries, for all your hard work, for your amazing artwork. Thank you everybody for dropping comments in the chat. And Haley's uh, Harley's uh, last comment is sometimes you've got to delete the layer or crash the program, though. That's right. Go all <laughs> lane with your drawings. Thank you, Robotic Pastries, for hanging out with us today. Thank you, everybody. This is DTM versus Robotic Pastries. Any last words that you'd like to share uh, with uh, everyone who loves your work right now? Uh, well, I guess really thanks for thanks for inviting me out to do it. And um, oh, if you like my work, you can check me out. And uh, Really just, just keep drawing, keep drawing, keep making stories. Just draw what it is that you love and you'll have fun with art. There you go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Char Charlie Charles May says, I vote for robotic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I am DTN. That was Robotic Pastries, and we'll catch you in two weeks for DTN versus W. 
W is my art mentor, and we're going to battle it out together. Uh -huh. Get ready for another amazing show. Until next time, I am DTM, Delta Tango Mike. Find me anywhere on the internet, Delta Tango Mike. Follow Robotic Pastries and let us know what you like about arts. Bring some questions, comments, suggestions, and, and find us so you can join us in our respective discourse. Until next time, I am DTM, and that is Robotic Pastries. Peace out. Mm -hmm.